Good morning. It is good to connect with you today. Today we continue our series out of the book of Deuteronomy, taking a look at faithfulness and what it means for us today. And as we go into our text today, we, we hear a moment where Moses is speaking to the people of Israel. We've been in um, kind of the second half or the latter part of the, the Exodus story that story where the Israelites wandered in the wilderness going to the promised land. They had been in captivity. And so we find ourselves uh, with this moment of Moses giving encouragement, giving direction of what is to come. So I invite you to hear these words from the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Hear, O Israel, you are about to cross the Jordan today to go in and dispossess nations larger and mightier than you, great cities fortified to the heavens, a strong and tall people, the offspring of the Anakim whom you know. You have heard it said of them, who can stand up to the Anakim? Know then today that the Lord your God is the one who crosses over before you as a devouring fire. He will defeat them and subdue them before you so that you may dispossess and destroy them quickly, as the Lord has promised you. When the Lord your God thrusts them out before you, do not say to yourself, It is because of my righteousness that the Lord has brought me in to occupy this land. It is rather because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is dispossessing them before you. It is not because of your righteousness or the uprightness of your heart that you are going in to occupy their land, but because of the wickedness of these nations, the Lord your God is dispossessing them before you in order to fulfill the promise the Lord made an oath, on oath to the, your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Know then that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to occupy because of your righteousness, for you are a stubborn people. Remember and do not forget how you provoked the Lord your God to wrath in the wilderness. You have been rebellious against the Lord from the day you came out of the land of Egypt until you came to this place. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I take a look at this text and I hear some of the the words that are used here, I I think of when I was growing up and my parents were trying to get me to do something. And they would say I was stubborn if I was not being compliant. And I appreciate and I can kind of get a sense even of how God may be frustrated with the people of Israel and, and saying that they're a stubborn people. If you wanted blunt, you know, truth right there, I believe the God is giving it right there. And it's a very real you know, feeling, a very real uh, experience. And I can relate, um, having been that stubborn people myself, I should say. When I think about this text also, I think about the, uh, the righteousness that's being spoken of here. The righteousness that uh, I believe is being alluded to is the idea that the people of Israel were somehow more noble. They were better than. They were, uh, you know, blessed in ways that the other people were not, which is why they're going to occupy that land. And God kind of turns this on them, turns this idea on them. Now, when we think about faithfulness, we think about that connection that you know, we have with God, that we are called to be faithful, to have our faith in God, to trust in God, to have our hope in God. And we also a little bit examined last week you know, how God is faithful to us, how God fulfills promises, how God cares for us, how God is with us as we go through life. But if we think about the challenges to faithfulness and thinking from our own experience from ourselves, we can think about how our pride and our own ideas of ourselves, how we interpret uh, the world according to our perspective, can get in the way of faithfulness, can get in the way of our connection with God. Pride is one of those uh, seven deadly sins that was, you know, talked a lot about in the Middle Ages. And you may uh, find it, you know, 
come up in various places describing, I know, seven sins that somehow uh, are, are greater, you know, that somehow are, are deadly to our well-being that can uh, pull us away from God or harm our relationships with others. And one of those seven deadly sins is pride. If you want to find the others, I encourage you to take a look uh, online. You can see those um, that are there and, and kind of examine that, you know, for your own self. But when I think about pride and the danger of pride and why that is such a challenge to faithfulness, why God here in Deuteronomy is reminding the people that they should not think so highly of themselves, I believe that that sin of pride uh, can be a can get in that way of where our hope is. It can get in the way of how we understand the promise God has for us and all that God has done for us as well. Now, pride is a balance. There is a, a, a level of pride, I would say, if I could use those words there described, you know, being, you know, uh, confident in your abilities. You know, we hear of, you know, say to athletes uh, that they should be, you know, have pride in their accomplishments. And uh, for folks who are going through education, you know, the, to be proud of what they've done. And, and there's good reason for that. I believe when we uh, achieve things, when we do things well, when we are, are gifted, you know, truly gifted in something, I, I believe we we should feel good about that. We should feel good about those accomplishments, about our talents and our abilities. And you know, I believe that the talents and abilities that we have are a gift from God. So to feel good about those things is important. But we also can think and understand how being too prideful, going too far, begin to think that we are totally perfect, that we can do no wrong, that the world revolves around us. We could see how pride at that point can be difficult, how it can be dangerous when we are trying to grow in faith and stay connected with our God. Part of it is our culture uh, values you know, the idea of a self-made person of a person being you know, proud in their accomplishments and, and totally owning those accomplishments back on to ourself, back to our own person. And again, I mean, be, doing things well, uh, being talented, you know, having a, you know, success in your endeavors, th those are not bad things in and of themselves. It is when we take those things and think we're better than other people. We think that we are better than God. And we begin to think that our own opinion matters more than God's. That's when that idea of pride becomes a deadly sin, in my opinion, because it gets in the way of our relationship with God. It can become, get in a relationship, it get in the way of the relationship we have with each other. And I believe it's important for us as we grow in faithfulness that we understand where pride can be dangerous, that we understand where we can get in trouble, quite honestly, with pride and how it can affect those around us and affect our relationship with God. Now, in our Deuteronomy text, it's, you know, uh, God is stressing quite a bit or, you know, speaking you know, quite a bit here about, um, you know, the righteousness. And I alluded to this earlier because there was an idea uh, that the people of Israel were more righteous. They were better than, they were more blessed. They were um, somehow above the people that they were going to be among in the promised land, that they were somehow just far superior. And I believe it's important for us to really consider that this going into the promised land, that the people of Israel going into the promised land was more of a fulfillment of that covenant that was made with the ancestors of Israel, with Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, that that going back to the promised land, because they had been in the promised land at one point, but this was a fulfillment of covenant fulfillment of agreement. It was an act of faithfulness uh, for God to, to make this happen, to bring the people out of Israel and bring them in. 
And part of this, this covenant, fulfilling of the covenant, fulfilling of the agreement, if uh, that makes more sense um, uh, to you, because sometimes it does for me, when you look at this relationship here, you can obviously see it's imbalanced. I mean, it, our, the, the God is, is bringing people into a new land, has done all these things to pull them out of Egypt. The, the relationship is very much imbalanced. But it's done, I believe, for hope. It's done for the hope of the people and also reminding the people that as they go into the land, the promised land, it is because their God is providing for them, their God is caring for them, not because they are somehow a cut above, but rather because of that love, that care, that providence that God is extending to the people of Israel. This is an important lesson for us when we begin to think that we are, are better than, that we are above others. And in, why that's an important lesson is that our God, I believe, values all of us. Our God has a future for all of us and invites all of us to be a part of that future. And because of the imbalanced relationship between us as human beings and with our God. Our God does this because of that care, that future of hope. And so when we can begin to think that we are a cut above, I believe it's important for us to remember it is our God who created us, our God who gave us life, our God who calls us forward into a future filled with hope. And this can be a challenge. It can be a, a humbling experience. But I believe as we embrace that humbleness, we embrace that relationship we have with God and we're faithful in that relationship, I believe we will be blessed. We will be connected with our God. We'll be able to experience a future that is filled with hope. And yes, it may be an experience or reminder we may not want to hear, especially if we've had a tough day. But I believe our God does care. Our God loves us and calls us forward. And I also believe our God wants us to be in relationship with the people in our lives in a way that is healthy, that is balanced. And keeping that pride in balance. You know, definitely being proud of our accomplishments, proud of, you know, the talents that come from our God that we are able to use, but not putting them in front of others in a way that separates relationship or we put that above others or we think we're above others. But rather, we have these things to help us stay connected, to be in community, to be in relationship with one another. And that's important to hold on to, that reminder. So brothers and sisters, I encourage us to remain grounded in that faithfulness, to definitely embrace all, all the good things we have done, to embrace our talents, embrace our abilities, but, imp but keep them in balance, to be reminded that it is our God who created us, who gave us those talents and abilities. And it is our God who calls us forward. That is our God who gives us life, that true life. And by following God, I believe we live in that future that God has in store for us. So let's be a faithful people, giving God the praise and the glory, giving God the thanks that God deserves for all that has been done for us and for the life that God is sharing with us now and for all of our days. Amen.